comparison values are the difference between patient test results and age matched normals. The plus symbols indicate normal sensitivity with a tolerance range of 4 decibels. In the corrected comparison table, the deviation from the BD curve is subtracted from the defect values to show hidden localized defects behind a uniform loss. Look to the red arrow. Those numbers are the defects away from the age matched values. If you read 5, it's minus 5 decibels. If you read 7, it's minus 7 decibels. Next is the defect or the bay curve. This curve ranks the visual field defects from the smallest to the deepest. Uniform loss here is 1.3 decibels. is clearly visible when the curve is parallel to the band of normative data. Focal defects results in a steep fall of the curve as we see in the arrow to the right hand side. Next is the probability plots which shows the probability of a real defect. The full black box indicates that this location has a defect with a probability of 99.5% that is to say, a highly significant defect. The significance values is pointed by the red arrow. Now, the global indices, which provide the statistical information about the mean defect, which is indicative of a uniform visual field loss, the loss variance, which indicates a localized or focal loss, minus two and a half decibels loss or more, means an abnormal field. The reliability factor is a percentage value of the positive and negative catch trials. It's called RF and should be under 15% for a test to be reliable. Look to the RF here, it is 9.7, so this is a relatively or good reliable test. Now we have an example. What can we conclude from this chart rapidly? The mean sensitivity is 22.3 decibels, the mean defect is 5.4 which means a generalized depression or mild generalized depression as we look to the debate curve. It is a little bit depressed behind the normative database. The loss variance is 8.5 decibels, which means that in addition to the generalized defect, there is a focal defect which is equal to 8.5 decibels. What report can we write about this chart? If we look to the reliability, it is zero, zero. The reliability factor is very good, so this is a very good reliable test. Look to the data curve, you will see a generalized depression, and if you look to the global indices, you will find it's equal to 6.2 decibels. Also, if you look to the Bidet curve, you will find a focal or localized defect, and its amount can be estimated from the loss variance in the global indices. It is equal to 15.4 decibels. This slide shows the global indices as it is written in a Humphrey report or a Humphrey test. 
In this example, the mean defect is minus 23.2 decibels, means that the generalized depression is severe. The significance is very high. The pattern standard deviation, which represents the localized loss, is 11 decibels. The short-term fluctuations are 5.9 decibels. The corrected pattern standard deviation, which is the real defect due to retinal locations defect, is 8.8 .8 decibels. So here is a rationalized depression and focal defect. This is a Humphrey chart. Look to the values on the left hand side. Of course, patient data and examination data are found, but in different locations than the different from the octopus chart. But if you look carefully to the data of the patient and the examination data, you will find that they are the same. But what's important in the Humphrey, if you look to the value table, here on the left hand side, look to the red arrow. There are two numbers in the same location. For example, 12 and 16, 15 and 13. This represents the short term fluctuations. This is one difference. Another difference is that the value table, when is translated to the total deviation, and pattern deviation, the defect is written in minus form. If you read minus 17, this means that this point is 17 decibels less than the normal sensitivity of this age. Another difference is that there is a program in the Humphrey called the glaucoma hemophilia test. It doesn't diagnose glaucoma, but it can tell you if this test is within normal limits, as we see here, look to the red arrow, or outside normal limits, as in this example, look to the red arrow. The global indices in the bottom to the right mean the effect pattern standard deviation short-term fluctuations, and corrected pattern standard deviation. So as we see, although there is a difference between the octopus chart and the Humphrey chart, yet at the end you can conclude the same data from each chart. The short-wave automated perimetry or SWAP is a software program present in the octopus. The SWAB is able to detect glaucomatous visual field loss prior to white on white perimetry because it uses, as you see, a blue target on a yellow background. The field defects exhibit a characteristic focal pattern. The prevalence of a SWAB field loss in high risk ocular hypertension is 15 to 30 percent. Field loss for a swab is wider than for a white on white perimetry. Progressive visual field loss can be identified sooner with the swab. Those are the advantages of the short wave automatic perimetry or swab, yet there are limitations. For example, the test is very long in time and can be boring and tiresome to aged patients. And media opacity does affect the test markedly because of the absorption of the media opacity by they absorb the yellow or blue wavelengths. Let's have an example. This is 
normal normal or white on white perimeter you look to the red area those are the results look to the global indices the reliability factor is zero zero so the reliability is very good the mean sensitivity is 23.22.3 the mean defect is 5.4 and in the case mild generalized depression the loss variance which is indicative of the focal defect is 8.5 decibels if we carry out to this same patient in the same day the same eye a blue on yellow or short wave automated parametric test look to the red arrow the program has changed it to normal DUI. DUI means blue and yellow. If you look to the global indices, the mean sensitivity has dropped markedly to 11.2 decibels. The mean defect is 11.9 decibels, and the loss variance is 67.8 decibels. So there is marked difference between the sensitivity of the white on white and the sensitivity of the blue on yellow. But we have to remember there are some disadvantages. There is no place here to mention details about the short wave automatic perimetry. It is going to be the subject of another presentation. But I have just to point out the facilities present in each modality of uh, visual field testing. Let's comment on this chart. The reliability is relatively good, less than 15% as you see from the reliability factor on the bottom line. But if we look to the debate curve, there is generalized depression, but there is a marked focal depression as you see. This marked focal depression is characteristic of normal tension glaucoma or normal pressure glaucoma. The difference between diffuse and localized field damage is that diffuse visual field damage is highly correlated with intraocular pressure or high pressure glaucoma or high tension glaucoma with concentric optic nerve head excavation while focal or local visual field damage is weakly related to intraocular pressure. Patients with normal pressure glaucoma tend to have localized nerve defects with no optic nerve head notching. With optic nerve head notching, I'm sorry. Before the end of this presentation, we have to be aware of some artifacts which might affect the results, like the lens, lens rim artifact. Spectacles sometimes do affect the visual field test. Look to the red arrows as if there is arc of defects. But if you look to the left hand side after removal of the lens spectacles, there is no defect. Of course, this is an artifact which one should be aware before interpreting the results. Thank you very much.